Who knows? Who knows? You know what that means it has to like reach a thousand. Oh. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. Wait, yeah. did you say eight, uh, Airbnb is like Airbnb is too overpriced? How because it's a new What's stock? The price, I'm winning it to be close to hundred dollars. How much is it? One hundred and forty-two. And what happens if it's one hundred forty-two and then you say, "Oh, I don't want it," but then it like skyrockets? Then that's my fault. Oh. I can't really predict anything with that stock because it's new. It's new, right? Oh yeah, so you have like no background thing. I have nothing to base it off of, and it makes no sense for it to go up because we're still in COVID. Yeah, plus Airbnb, when you think about it, it's like people living in other people's houses, right? Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't bug well for COVID. Nope. Okay, so this is what we were missing on, when was it, yesterday, Wednesday, okay. Wednesday. Okay, so this is what is called the unit circle, okay, uh, where our X values is represented by cos, and our Y values is represented by sign theta, okay? Uh, so the thing about this that makes it very easy is that given our x as cos and our y as sine, we are then able to find what tan is because tan theta based off x, y, and r is what ratio? Sine over what? Yep, so x over y. So it would be cosine over sine. Okay. No opposite over no, y over x. Whoops. Opposite over adjacent. So Jose is right, everyone. I was wrong. Which is just equal to sine over cosine. Okay. Uh, so let's try it for one. So let's see. Let's take tan of pi over four. Okay. Uh, so our Sine value is one over root two divided by our cos value, which is also one over root two. You flip the second fraction over. Oh, because R is our hypotenuse. And remember when we draw our terminal arm, we have R as our radius or hypotenuse our x as our values over here, and these would be our y's. Okay, we write it like all together. X, y, r. Okay. Two even over either way, you left the two is on top, right? Yep. Okay. So two root two divided by two root two, you still flip them over, everything still cancels out. Yeah. Okay. So as we can see, this is quadrant one, two, three and four okay so everything still holds true with the cast rule okay so positive are going to be sine and cosine okay and ten but we're just focusing on cosine and sine because that's what the unit circle is focusing on in quadrant two uh what would be our positive trig ratio uh, sine Sine is positive and cos is negative. Okay. Uh, how about in quadrant three? Tangents. So tan is positive, but negative is sine and cos. And, and then positive in quadrant four is cosine, <clears throat> and the negative is just sine. So do you guys understand why I now say, let's just say cos of pi over 6 is the same thing as negative cos of 5 pi over 6? So let's, let's, let's prove this using our unit circle. So what does cos of pi over 6 give us originally? Uh, 30. No, no, like the ratio. Oh. That's a good question. Look at our x value. Uh, root, oh. 3 over 2. root 3 over 2. Maybe, James. What is it? Oh, that's Damn. 
That's a fixed wall. Fixed wall. Okay. And what is cos of five pi over six on our second quadrant? Yep. So uh, negative uh, root three over two. Yeah, that's why. Right. That makes sense. The negatives make a positive. So you get root three over two is equal to root three over two. You know, I've never taught where I use that in a circle. I was never, like, I don't know what my class was like. I was never taught yeah. that. A, you guys were never taught to use it. Did you guys use this last year? Yeah. They, they said we used it, but I never learned how to use it. Yeah. No, so this is what, so the examples we did on Wednesday with, you know, figuring out what negative angle works with, or making the equivalent statements. This is where the unit circle is the most beneficial part. Okay, because then you can say cos of pi over six is also the same thing as saying cos of negative eight pi over six. I have a question. No, seven pi over six, sorry. I have a question. So you're not, are you gonna ask us, like for example, cos pi over six is equivalent to sine whatever? I would just say give me, an, give me an equivalency statement concerning sine of pi over six. Oh. Okay. And then you would have to prove to me where we can make sine of pi over six and what quadrant we can make it equivalent in. Like, so most likely, uh, so we have our cast rule. So obviously in quadrants three and four, okay, you would have to say sine of pi over six is equal to negative sine of okay. whatever angle is in those two quadrants. But like what I'm saying is like say for example one side is cos, one side is sine. Are you mm -hmm. ever gonna ask us to do something like that? So when is cosine equal to sine? Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, so that's there are so if you look at the we're gonna be doing the trig graphs, there are overlaps between sine and cosine at specific oh. angles. Right. So did we already learn that? Okay, we haven't we haven't we haven't graphed stuff yet. So now I'm gonna we're gonna do a bit of the last lesson again and see if it becomes easier. <clears throat> so the first one's pretty easy. Uh, let's just fire through the first one. So we want to convert each of the following standard angles into radians. So what is my radian measure for 30 degrees? Pi over six. Pi over six. The next one? Pi over four. Pi over three. Pi divided by two. Who is this on fire? Pi. And three over two pi. Yeah. And then just for... Say two pi. Okay? So we have pi, pi over four, pi over three, pi over two pi, three pi over two, and two pi. Okay? Uh, this is going to be probably the theta angles you're going to be using to graph your sine and cosine and tan functions. Okay? Uh, so just remember those primary angles. So this is where we get into example two. So we want to state an equivalent expression in terms of the related acute angle, which is the angle made between the terminal arm and the x-axis, OK? Uh, so the first one is sine of 7 pi over 6. So we know pi over 6. We're going to look at our denominator. This is we're referring to the angle pi over 6, which is 30 degrees. So what we can do to determine where the terminal arm ends up at is divide each quadrant into 30 degree intervals. So we have 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210, 240, 270, 300, and 330. And then obviously the last one is 360. So, because it's a positive angle, 7 pi over 6, 
We're just going to count seven portions counterclockwise. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Am I not presenting? That is awkward. Oh, I forgot to present the other screen. Damn. It's terrible. Oh, my. Oh, gosh. You're also muted. No, no, I'm not muted there. Okay, okay. Are you recording? Are you yeah, recording? I'm recording. Okay, yeah, yeah, good, we're good, we're good. Uh, can you guys see the screen now? Yes. Yes, no, yes, okay, perfect. So, like I was saying, uh, we looked at the, 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 the denominator of seven power over six, which is six, so we're going to refer to our normal acute angle of power over six, which is 30 degrees. So we are going to divide each quadrant into 30 degree intervals. And then count seven sections counterclockwise because positive angles we go counterclockwise. And then our terminal arm ends here. Okay? So now we have to look at the section or what's left over that's closest to our x axis. Okay? So we have seven sine of seven pi over six. So what would this angle beta? B. Oh, 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 where are you asking in terms of an equation or in terms no, of value? In terms of the value. Two times. No, what's this acute angle over here? Oh, uh, 30. 30. Oh, I thought it was like a I think we overthought that one. Really overthought that one. So beta is equal to pi over six. six. Yeah. Okay. The reason why is because we have. One, two, three, four, five, six sections. So that's six pi over six. And then because it's in quadrant three, remember we do pi plus beta. beta. So it would be pi over six. And is sine positive or negative in quadrant three? Negative. So you're just looking at the angle closest to the x-axis, okay? We're not looking at this one over here, okay? Because it's not the closest to the x-axis. So, so say for example that the the angle it ends up on is like 90 or 180 or 270, mm -hmm. which quadrant would that belong to? Oh, uh, those, so for those, 90, 80, and 270, in the unit circle, if you saw, Oh, if it right. hits 90, the x value is 0 and the y value is 1. So that would represent pi over 2. Okay. Uh, 180, negative 1 and 0. 270, 0, negative 1. And then quadrant or 0 or 2 pi is 0 and 0. Or no, 1 and 0, sorry. So is this more clarified? Better? Makes more sense. Okay, let's do one more. And hopefully we are done with the confusion. Okay, so the next one is going to be negative 5 pi over 3. Okay, and if we look at, at our denominator, what primary acute angle are we looking at? 60. No, over 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we can divide it into 60 degree intervals. Uh, but because we can multiply by a common multiple on the top and at the bottom, so if you want to multiply the numerator and denominator by two and work with 30 degree intervals, that is fine because negative 10 pi over six still simplifies to negative five pi over three, right? Yes. So you guys wanna work with 60 degrees or 30 degrees? 60 is fine. So we're going to divide our unit circle into 60 degree intervals. So our first one is going to be at 60 degrees. Our second one is going to be at 120. Apologies, sir. You mind if I grab my charger? Go for it. Our next one is going to be at 180. Our next one is going to be at 240. Then 300, and then at 360. Thank you, sir. 
So what is the sign in front of our radian measurements? So this is our radian measurements. Do we have a positive or negative? Negative. So are we going clockwise or counterclockwise? Sorry, clockwise. Clockwise. Yeah. So we are going clockwise, which means we are counting five sections going clockwise, starting from zero or 360 as we call it. So from zero degrees, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and the closest angle to the x-axis is going to be this one over here, which is our beta. And what would our beta angle be? How many sections are left over? Four. So it would be pi over three. Which means secant of negative five pi over three is equal to, because it's in quadrant one, are all trig ratios positive? Yes. Yes. So it's just going to equal the secant of pi over three. Why is like beta over there? Because remember, we want beta to be closest to the x axis. Okay? We can't have it closest to the y axis. Wait, sir. So, yes. So why can't the beta be negative? Like negative pi over three, or that's not allowed because you're still going clockwise. Yeah, but why can't it be negative? Because of the fact that it's in quadrant one already. No, I meant like the radian value itself, not secant. So with the related acute angle, we're not gonna go. Okay, if we go all the way around, right, it's gonna have any negative. 6 pi oh, over 3. Okay, yeah, yeah. But because the related acute, the closest way to get to the acute angle is to go counterclockwise, oh, okay. that's why we would use pi over 3. Because you want to find the shortest way possible to get to that acute angle. Right. Okay, so is everyone like understanding this better now? I'm posing the question to cohort A and C as well. So do you guys understand it better now? Yeah. James says the homework is harder. I didn't believe him, and I still don't believe him because I did some questions with him. He just didn't read it properly. Yes, but sir, you've been doing math for a long time. I actually don't do your homework questions. I just do it on the spot when you guys ask me. Oh, really? Yeah. That's why I say give me two minutes to think about it, and then I just. Ah, okay. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, trust me. I eat my lunch. I don't really prepare for homework questions. Because I can't really prepare to work. I'm not going to do a whole homework. Now I feel bad asking for help. No. It's like you're fine. eating lunch. No, I eat my lunch before I come here at all. Oh, okay. So yeah, plus, I don't want to cheat myself. Because if I do, then I'm not really making my brain work. So I'd rather do them on the fly. Oh. I'm going to save this, because this, this, this note's already better than the last one. <laughs> I feel like there's less writing in this one. You know when you do things the second time around, they're better? This is a prime example. Yes. Okay, so the next one is sine 330 degrees. Okay, so are we going clockwise or counterclockwise with this one? Counter. Counterclockwise. And why did it change the damn thick one? Is that the default setting? Because that could be it. Yeah. You could change the default setting, I believe. I will do that on my spare time. OK, so we have sine of 330 degrees. We want the related acute angle closest to our x-axis, which is going to be beta. So what would our related acute angle be for this one? Or how much degrees is left before hitting 360? 30. 30. But because our thing isn't in radians, we don't have to use radians. Okay? So sine of 330 degrees is equal to? Sine is negative on the fourth quadrant, so it would be negative. 
negative sine 30. Yep. So when you say exact value, so it's, you can just use the way to give it to you? Exact value means they want the ratio. Oh. Okay. So what is sine of 30 usually? What is our ratio for sine 30? One half. One half. So sine 330 is equal to one half. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I think, yeah, trig is the thing you do, need to do in person, not online. What is the purpose of trig in the medical field? You're not going to ask you to calculate the ratio of something in a person's body. That's a joke. But... That's, that's, why, that's why you take life science math. There's such a thing in university. Really? So they have different levels of math. Right. So you have, so you have the kids who just take math just to take math. So the mathematicians, they take the hardest math. Then you have the engineering math, which is the second hardest. James. Uh, then you have general math, and then life science math is the last one. Oh, so it's the life lowest. science is the easiest one. That makes sense. Because you don't really need to. Because don't you need to like math? take specific courses in order to graduate. I don't even think it's calculus for health sign math. I think it's like something completely okay, easier. <laughs> Imagine. We will see. Okay. So our next example is cos of negative 3 pi over 4. So we're going to again focus on our denominator. So what angle are, are we going to refer to? 45, which is pi over 4. So we're going to divvy up each quadrant into 45 degree intervals. So 45, 90, 135, 180. What's next? 215? No. 225. And then 360, comma, zero. Okay, so our radian and measure is negative three pi over four. So which way are we going? So what would our acute angle so again, it's just equal to pi over 4, which means cos of negative 3 pi over 4 is equal to of pi over 4. So what is the ratio of cos of pi over 4? Ratio? Using our special triangles. Oh. Or can we just use the unit circle? You can use the unit circle. That's fine. <laughs> Which is equal to negative root 2 over 2. And using our unit circle, what is our post value at 225 degrees? Negative. Either I'm not understanding the part. It is. Well, I just didn't simplify it. Oh. So it's negative two, negative root two over two. So you can always check your answers to these types of questions uh, using the unit circle. <clears throat> So are your brains less confused now? They're still kind of confused. A lot better. Yeah, that makes sense. It's, it's just the homework. Can you go back to the part where you apply the computer circle? For a phobia. Well, I was adopted the other day, and she like specifically told me to talk. I'm pretty sure that. I think you won't. So, 
the unit circle. So we're looking for cos of negative 3 pi over 4, which is just 225 degrees, correct? And if we look at our unit circle, what is what is cos at 225? What is cos at 5 pi over 4? Or 3 pi, 5 pi over 4 is the same thing as saying negative 3 pi over 4. I'm never going to give you guys an angle that's not on the end circle. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So don't worry, all the angles should be on the unit circle. I'm not going to make you guys, well, if I give you guys 3 pi over 12, you can, oh, okay. you can manipulate that, right? Because yeah. you can just divide, well, divide by 3 and you get pi over 4. So if I give you a denominator that's different <coughs> from the first 6 or 3, uh, chances are, like 99%, that you can uh, reduce it. Okay, and last but not least, let's do cosecants of pi over 3. Where is pi over 3? <laughs> 60 degrees. Okay, <clears throat> so... So that is our acute angle, okay? Nice. Uh, so, but if we say cosecant of pi over three, it is the same thing as saying one over sine of pi over three. <clears throat> so what is the ratio of sine of pi over three? And we're just gonna flip it. Is it like one over I'm going by that right So it's two root three, two over root three, right? Oh yeah. Right. So it's going to be two over root three because sine is just root Wait. three over two. Yeah. Right? No, it's two root three over three if you simplify it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> So regularly, our sign is what? Why is it? I don't know. That must get annoying. Because it's every time I erase, it does this. So what is regularly sine of pi over 3? Oh, it's <laughs> I'll keep so sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. And remember, cosecant, you're just turning the numerator into the denominator and the denominator into the numerator. So cosecant of pi over 3 is equal to 2 over root 3. And if we simplify it, it becomes what? Two root three over. Okay, and then let's do our last question. Uh, three pi, five, five pi over six. You guys can do D, E, and F on your own as an extra practice. I know you guys wrote it on the lesson on Wednesday, uh, but try to do it again and see if you get the same answer using the unit circle and what we just did today. So our last question we're going to focus on is going to be this question over here. Uh, these questions are really easy. Uh, just know your special triangles and you should be done. Okay. So we want to evaluate sine of pi over 3 times cos of pi over 6 plus sine of pi over 6 times cos of pi over 3. So our first angle, our first ratio we want to figure out is what is our ratio for sine of pi over 3? And what is the ratio for cos of pi over 6? What is the ratio for sine of pi over 6? And for cos of pi over 3? One half. So they made this question super easy for you. Thank you. Okay, 
So multiplying fractions, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So root three times root three, the roots just cancel out. So we're just left with three, two times two, four plus one over four. I don't know you guys are more like. The ones where you actually have to simplify the radical. Oh, oh okay, so it's like basically the same thing. So same idea. four over four. Is equal to one. That's pretty easy. Which one? So like, um, oh, is it because I, I didn't I didn't multiply by the conjugate? So I know in the unit circle I wrote. What did I write in the unit circle? Uh, like four times pi over three mm -hmm. is one over two. Sine is y, right? Uh, Post is x, sine is y. Yeah. Yeah. What happens? Sine is y cos of x. Oh, we're looking at power over 3, right? Yeah. yeah. So 60, y is y. No, sine of power over 3 is y. Y value. Oh, sine okay. Right? Sine is y. Okay. You gotta look for the sine of y. Remember, unit circle, your cos is x, your sine is y. So now we're going to get into something you guys are familiar with. My favorite unit. We're going to be doing graphing trig functions. And for the next lesson, which we're not going to do today, is we are going to be uh, graphing transformations of trig functions. So literally the next lesson, if you knew how to transform functions with polynomials, it's the same thing. Oh my gosh. There's nothing that changes with this. With the next lesson. I mean, I can do it today. I mean, just get rid of it, but I don't want today to be a chill day. Can you play some reviews, sir? Yeah. Thank you, So, we're going to be exploring graphs of primary trig functions. So, we have definitions the max and min value, same thing with polynomial functions. The maximum is the highest possible y value that it can reach. And the minimum value is the lowest y value that it can reach. The axis of symmetry uh, with a poly polynomial function uh, is the axis of symmetry vertical or horizontal. So if I drew, let's just say a polynomial function, y equals x squared. Is my axis of symmetry vertical or horizontal? Remember it, needs to look identical. Remember, it needs to look identical. Vertical. So this is my axis of symmetry. With polynomial functions, it's vertical. What do you think it's going to be with sinusoidal functions? Horizontal. Horizontal. Okay, it's going to be a horizontal line slicing through the middle of the sine function or cosine function. So if we have a function like this, our axis of symmetry is going to be the vertical line in the middle where it splits the graph evenly from top and bottom. So this is going to be my axis. 
the amplitude is our maximum minus our minimum divided by two. And our amplitude is just how far up or down from the axis of symmetry the hump is in the sine function. So this you probably did in physics or are going to do in physics. Well, they might do it this quad graph. We didn't do a lot of Is that frequency? Yes. The period is the change in the independent variable that corresponds to one cycle. So the period goes from one peak to another or one low to another. Okay? So that would be one period. And then we have our argument, which is the expression on which the function operates. For example, sine x plus pi. Okay, uh, that would be what's in the brackets. Uh, we'll worry about that in the next lesson. So sine is a function, and x plus pi is the argument. Okay, so x is any x value on your x axis, usually represented by an angle. Okay, plus pi. So the first graph you want to draw, let's see if you guys remember good 11 trick in these basic functions. Uh, so the first graph you want to draw is sine theta. Feel free to use your unit circle. You'll probably get the answers there. Okay, so what is sine at zero? Three. Zero? Sine at zero is nine. It's one. Sine at zero, oh, zero is zero. Yeah, it's one, my bad. Cos is x, sine is y. So it's zero. I thought, but you, okay, okay. I didn't hesitate that shit. Yeah, I threw us off. No, because I wanted to see if you realized the mistake. What is sine of power over 2? What, what y value does it give us? Oh. What's the human circle? 1? One. Pi? Yeah, zero. Zero again. Three pi over two. Nope. Nope. Negative one. And two pi. Zero. zero. Okay. I knew that. You knew that. I knew that. So we have pi over two. <laughs> pi. Three pi over two, and we have two pi. We're gonna label this one and negative one. So now all we're gonna do is just plot our points out. So we have zero, zero, power over two and one, pi and zero, three pi over two, and zero, uh, negative one, and two pi and zero. And this one would continue on to the negative axis as well. Okay, so let's start with the easy part first. What is my maximum value? And what is my minimum value? What's the lowest point that it hits? Negative one. So my domain, well, we can't really use x. Uh, Oh. We're gonna denote it as theta because we're working with angles on the x-axis for sine functions. Okay, so it's gonna be theta is an element of all real numbers. Okay, and for our range y e r such that. Uh, Remember, equal to, because it can touch it, okay? So that would be our range. 
So what would be our period? I know I said from either top to top or bottom to bottom, but because we don't have either or, F sine and cosine have a period of two pi. Okay? Always. Always. Unless you transform it, then the period changes. So the parent function would always Parent functions always have, except for 10, all cosine and sine have a period of two pi. Because if you continue at the next possible angle, it'll hit one again. And from this angle, minus power over two, you're going to get two pi. So the next angle would be, I believe, five power over two. What's five power over two minus power over two? Makes sense, right? Okay. So our amplitude, we need to figure it out. So our amplitude is going to be our maximum minus the minimum and dividing that by two. So we'll look at our amplitude. So one minus negative one divided by two, which is equal to just one. Okay. All right. Right. Because x we usually just associate with real numbers. Uh, theta we want to we associate with all radian angles of theta. So I know your argument is why don't we change that? Pardon? You can use x still. Like x, you can say x is still an angle, but. I will know what you were talking about anyways if you say x or theta. Yeah, Okay, and what is the equation of our axis? Max plus min divided by 2. 1 plus negative 1 divided by 2 is equal to 0 over 2, which gives us Zero. So our equation of the axis is y is equal to zero. I should really rewrite this and say y is equal to zero because I want you guys to write it like that. So you guys are going to get refreshed from grade 11. This is what you guys did a couple months ago. Or when did you guys have advanced? First or second semester? Yep. I mean, when did you have functions last, last year? First semester. Oh, that's a long time ago. Yeah, for us. I remember first. Yeah. Doesn't matter. It looks like you forgot everything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I only got the road. Yeah, I got the first. Darn it! I opened my phone before ten o'clock. Oh, you you were disappointed at the time? No, I was. I, I, I try to make sure that I look at my phone every hour, not like every freaking second. I try to have self control, but I just like out of habit. You said you lasted 45 minutes? Yeah. From 8.30 to 9.15? No, I start every hour, I mean, like, so I just looked at my phone 13 minutes ago. It's not bad. You have a terrible perception of time, though. <laughs> I thought, it's just out of habit that I looked at my phone. Like, right? I'm trying to delete. Put it away for you. I don't even look at my phone like that. I have issues, sir. I'm blood. I'm blood. Like, I didn't even know I was teaching for almost an hour. Until you made it known to me. Okay. 
So our next one is going to be the cosine function. So remember, we're looking at our x values in the unit circle. Uh, so what is cos of 0? It's the x value on the unit circle. Oh, oh. One. Say it with confidence, man. However, two, what's the x value? Zero. Pi? Negative one. Three pi over two? Zero. Zero. One. One. I, just, I don't have confidence. Who cares if you're wrong? You didn't learn. I care. Sorry, that's secret. I apologize. Try to be nice. Oh, so I'm going every other one is going to be power two. So I'm going in power two increments. Okay. So this is my first point right here. That's going to be my first x value, pi over 2. My next one is just going to be pi, because if I just add another pi over 2, it's 2 pi over 2, which is the same thing as pi. I'm going every other one because they gave me a really small scale, and I don't want things to be super squished together. And 2 pi. So all we're going to do now is we are going to just plot down our points. So we have 0 and 1. So what is the period of a cosine function? Here we have a better visual. So we have from top, or a peak, you can call it whatever. From peak to peak, how far did it go? Two pi. So that would be our period. What would be our amplitude if it's a similar uh, function to sine of x, but it just shifted. Does our amplitude change? No. So it's still going to be 1. And what would our equation of the axis be? Zero. Y is equal to 0. Maximum value stays the same. Positive 1. Minimum value stays the same. Minus 1. And the domain and the range stay the same. Oh, the brackets? Yeah. <laughs> even the symbols. Like, I just like normal R's now. I can't even draw it in the dead exam. So, Let's just draw sine beside cosine, and let's see what you guys notice about them. Which one looks cooler? Well, they're both really the same. Yeah, I like that one better. The ones ahead. No, not one. Not that one's ahead. Or like they're. One shifted. I just wanted to tell you that cos, not cos, uh, yeah. So our cos theta is just shifted to the left. Right. Right, sorry. It's just shifted to the right of sine. So. So if we shift our sine graph to the left by power over 2, it's going to look identical to cosine. Okay? That's all I just really wanted to show you. That I didn't hear you. Uh, 
<laughs> so, did you guys grab 10 last year? Oh, 10 data? No, this one, this one looks weird. It's I don't remember if I... So, based off our ratios on the unit circle, where 10 is uh, y over x, okay? Will there ever be a time where 10 will be undefined? Yeah. Because y equals, yeah. Well, x can equal zero. Remember, 10 is y over x, right? Oh, yeah, sorry. So there is a chance that x can equal to zero, okay? So based off our points, 10 at zero is just gonna be zero. 10 at pi over two, what is my ratio at pi over two between y and x? Undefined. What is my ratio at pi? Okay, and at three pi over two? Sorry, I can't uh, pull up. Yeah, undefined. Undefined, and what is my ratio at 2 pi? Zero. Zero. Perfect. So yeah. what does that mean 10 is going to have at those undefined points? No? No. Uh, Especially in the asymptotes. Asymptotes. <laughs> it just has a burning hatred for that. Remember, a whole is when you can cross out the numerator and a denominator. Okay, so at pi over 2 and at 3 pi over 2, we are going to have our vertical asymptotes. But we can't just simply graph. 10 based off the point zero, 0, pi and 0, and 2 pi and 0, okay? So we need to look at the unit circle and see which angles give us a ratio of positive or negative 1. Remember y over x. Use the, use the multiples of pi over 4. Ooh, yeah, pi over So if you were to take the ratio of tan of pi over 4, which is equal to y over x, what is my y value at pi over 4? Using the unit circle. Of oh, 1 over root 2. Okay. Therefore, it would be root 2 over 2. Doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, what is my x value at pi over 4? 1 over root 2. They cancel each other. Yep. Is equal to one. Right. Okay. So at pi over four, we have ten is equal to one. Okay. So pi over four is going to be in between zero and pi over two. So it's going to be right in the middle of it. Okay. Are there any other ratios that give us tan equal to one or negative one? Well, if you simply follow the pattern, okay? Um, in quadrant one, you get a positive over a positive, which gives us positive one. In quadrant two, one of the ratios is gonna be negative. So at 3 pi over 4, what do you think 10 is going to equal? Negative 
negative one because one of them is going to be negative, the other is going to be positive. So you get three pi over four and a negative one. What would the next one be? So where does five pi over four land in? What quadrant? Which quadrant does 5 pi over 4 land in? So if quadrant 1 gives us pi over 4 and quadrant 2 gives us 3 pi over 4, where would 5 pi over 4 land in? 3? Okay. Quadrant 3. It'll land in quadrant 3. Okay. Which means both x and y are positive or negative? Negative. Negative. So negative divided by a negative will give us positive one. And last but not least, we have our final angle before 360, which is seven pi over four. And where does that one land in? So if, if we go quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, where does seven pi over four land in? Four. Four, okay. Which means? It's gonna be Negative over positive, which gives us negative one. Ah, right. The only reason we can do this is because we prove power over four gives us one, which means that every power over four interval, we are either going to get ten is equal to plus or minus one. Okay. So because we prove ten of power over four is one. Okay, we can assume that at every 45 degrees, okay, uh, 10 is going to be either plus or minus one. Okay, so every, so we would just add pi over four plus two pi over four. So every 90 degrees, it keeps going, it's gonna be plus or minus one. Okay, so if we do pi over four plus Power over two, what does that simplify to give us? Three power over yeah. four. Okay, so we know power over four, 10 gives us positive one. Okay, when we're at three power over four, we're in quadrant two. Okay, which means we're gonna have either our X or Y. We're going to have our x be negative and our y be a positive value. So a positive divided by a negative gives us a negative number, which would be negative 1. Okay? Uh, let me just show you that briefly. So what would our y be in quadrant 2 in the unit circle for 3 pi over 4? One thirty-five root two over two. Yeah. Right. Divided by what's our x? Negative root two over two. So that I was just doing that to save you guys doing the work, okay? Because trig functions usually follow a specific pattern, and that pattern holds true for the rest of the function, okay? You can keep going all the way to the right. That same pattern will hold, okay? So if I were to find 10 at 9 pi over 4, what is it going to give me? Oh, positive 1. Yep. Positive 1. And then you continue, 11 pi over 4, negative 1. You keep going. Oh, Oh, <laughs> so that's what your 
10 function. Look like scratch marks. Okay, so what would our period be for 10? Oh. Remember I said everything is 2 pi besides 10. So if we take the difference between the asymptotes, okay? So from asymptote to asymptote, how many, how many radians does it go through? So we have 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 2, which equals 2. So our period for our tan theta is going to be pi. Does this graph have an amplitude? Does it? Does it have an absolute maximum or an absolute minimum? So this is not applicable. It's not applicable. So what would the equation of my axis be? Uh, it's uh, not applicable either. It's it can be y equals zero. Oh. <clears throat> Where do we find our vertical asymptotes? Okay. Plus and minus three pi over two, plus and minus three pi over two, and so on. You can have negatives. Oh, we're just gonna make sense. We, did, we have negative angles before, you're just going <laughs> clockwise. The same as the Jupiter. Do you have an actual mean value? Mm -hmm. no. no. None and none. What would our range be? Okay. Such that, such that, yeah, pi, uh, x, sorry, theta cannot be pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Because remember, the minus just means you're going clockwise on the circle. A weird looking graph. Wait, so we write theta is not equal? Theta, x, x doesn't really matter. I don't know what you're talking about. So 10 is the most beautiful graph there is. With sarcasm or? Uh, I mean 50-50. Yeah, -50. <laughs> we're done. So I'm not going to do the transformations. Uh, I mean, I could do it. It'll just take, I'm pretty sure if you guys looked at it, you guys would be like, OK, this is from polynomial function. So this is super easy. Um, I want you guys to do some of the work for until break, so for the, the next 10 minutes. And then you guys can ask me questions to take up from unit four with those reciprocal asymptote nonsense graphs. Okay? So cohort A and C, uh, do a bit of your work until 9.40, and then take a 10-minute break. <clears throat>